This is Into the Multiverse with Josh Peck. Hello and welcome to Into the Multiverse. I am your host, Josh Peck. If you haven't had a chance to do so, make sure you subscribe and please click the bell for notifications. Also, if YouTube still doesn't notify you, just know that every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Central, you will get a new episode of Into the Multiverse. Uh, Japan's Hayabusa mission made history in 2010 for bringing back to Earth the first samples ever collected on an asteroid. But the seven-year, four-billion-kilometer odyssey was marked by degrees graded solar panels, uh, innumerable mechanical failures, and a fuel explosion that knocked the spacecraft into a tumble uh, and cut communications with ground for two months. Now, when planning its encore, Hayabusa 2, Japan scientists and engineers were determined to avoid these problems. They made components more robust, enhanced communication capabilities, and thoroughly tested new technologies. But the largest... Um, The target asteroid, Ryugu, had fresh surprises in store. Yuchi Suda, which is uh, Hayabusa 2's project manager at the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency's Institute of Space and Astronautical Science, or ISAS, uh, which is headquartered in Sagamahara, said, quote, by looking at the details of every asteroid ever studied, we had expected to find at least some wide, flat area suitable for a landing, end quote. Instead, when the spacecraft reached Ryugu in June of 2018, at 290 million kilometers from Earth, it found a cragged, cratered, uh, boulder-strewn surface that makes landing a daunting challenge. The first sampling touchdown, scheduled for October, uh, was postponed until at least the end of this month, and at a symposium here on uh, the 21st and 22nd of December, ISAS engineers presented an audacious new plan to make a pinpoint landing between closely spaced boulders. Quote, it's breathtaking, end quote, says Bruce, D- uh, Bruce Dahmer, a, an origins of life researcher at the University of California, Santa Cruz. Yet most everything else has gone according to plan since Hayabusa 2 was launched in December of 2014. Its cameras and detectors have already provided clues to the asteroid's mass, density, Uh, and mineral and elemental composition, and three rovers dropped on the asteroid have examined the surface. Now, at the symposium, ISAS researchers presented early results, including evidence of an abundance of organic material and hints that the asteroid's parent body once held water. Interestingly enough, now Ryugu is one kilometer across and 900 meters uh, from top to bottom with a uh, notable bulge around the equator, kind of like a diamond. Visible light observations and computer modeling suggest it's a porous pile of rubble that likely agglomerated dust, rocks, and boulders after another asteroid or, uh, or other type of uh, body slammed into its parent body during the early days of the solar system. A Ryugu spins around its own axis once every 7.6 hours, but simulations suggest that during the early phase of its formation it had a rotation period of only three and a half hours. And that probably produced the bulge by causing surface landslides or pushing material outward from the core. Uh, At least that's what scientists say. Now, they believe that analyzing surface material from the equator in an Earth-based laboratory could offer support for one of those scenarios. If the sample has been exposed to space weathering for a long time, it was likely moved there by landslides, but if it is relatively fresh, it probably migrated from the asteroid's interior. Now, so far, Hayabusa 2 has not detected water on or near Ryugu's surface, but its infrared spectrometer has found sides of hydroxide-bearing minerals that suggest water once existed either on the parent body or on the asteroid. And the asteroid's high porosity also suggests it once harbored significant amounts of water or ice and other volatile uh, compounds that later escaped. Now, early last month, NASA's OSIRIS-REx, yes, that is actually the name, uh, reached asteroid Bennu, which is shaped like a spinning top as uh, as well. And the U.S. Space Agency has reported uh, that 
it actually has water trapped in the soil. Now, on the 21st of September, Hayabusa 2 dropped a pair of rovers the size of a birthday cake to named Minerva 1A and 1B on Ryugu's northern hemisphere. Uh, taking advantage of its low gravity to hop autonomously, they take pictures and have revealed microscopic features of the surface. And on the 5th of October, Hayabusa 2 released a rover developed by the German and French space agencies that analyzed soil samples and returned additional pictures. Now, the ultimate objective to bring asteroid samples back to Earth will allow lab studies that can reveal much more about the asteroid's age and content. ISAS engineers program the spacecraft to perform autonomous landings, anticipating safe touchdown zones at least 100 meters in diameter. But instead, the biggest safe area within the first landing zone turned out to be only 12 meters wide. Now, that will complicate what was already a difficult operation. So prior to each landing, Hayabusa 2 planned to drop a small sphere sheathed in a highly reflective material to be used as a target to ensure the craft is moving in sync with the asteroid's rotation. Uh, gravity then pulls the craft down gently until a collection uh, horn extending from its underside makes contact with the asteroid after a bullet-like projectile is fired into the surface. Soil and rock fragments hopefully ricochet uh, into the catcher within the horn. Now, for safety, the craft has to steer clear of rocks larger than 70 centimeters. So during a rehearsal in late October, Hayabusa 2 released a target marker above the 12-meter safe circle. But unfortunately, it came to rest more than 10 meters outside the zone. But it is just 2.9 meters away from the edge of a second possible landing site that's 6 meters in diameter. Engineers now plan to have the craft first hover above the target marker and then move laterally to be above the center of uh, one of the two sites. Now, because the navigation camera points straight down, the target marker will be outside the camera's field of view as Hayabusa 2 descends, leaving the craft to navigate on its own. Futu Tiri, uh, who is in charge of mission guidance, navigation, and control, said, quote, we are now in the process of selecting which landing site to aim for, end quote. Aiming at the smaller zone means Hayabusa 2 can keep the target marker in sight until the craft is close to the surface. The bigger zone gives more leeway for error, but the craft will lose its view of the marker earlier in the descent. Now, assuming the craft survives the first landing, plans call for Hayabusa 2 to blast a two-meter deep crater into Ryugu's surface at another site a few months later by hitting it with a two-kilogram copper projectile. This is expected to expose subsurface material for observations by the craft's cameras and sensors. The spacecraft uh, may collect some material from the crater as well using the same, that same horn device, and there could be a third touchdown elsewhere on the asteroid. So if all goes well, Hayabusa 2 will make it back to Earth with sample collections from the asteroid in the year 2020. Uh, now, of course, as always, I would like to know what you think. Is this just a big, giant waste of money, or is there actually some things that we can learn? Also, what would it mean for us as Christians if they actually found organic material, if they found organic life on this asteroid, or even water for that matter? If you're watching this on YouTube, please leave me a comment in the comment section below. Uh, I would love to know what you think. Now, that is all for today, and again, please don't, uh, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. Thank you for joining me yet again on Into the Multiverse, and until next time, take care and God bless. As many as 80% of Americans are carrying a time bomb, a medical crisis in their bodies right now, unaware that they will soon develop prolonged chronic illness, autoimmune disease, or even cancer. Today's frightening truth is citizens are being poisoned every single day without their knowledge. A health epidemic largely brought on by industrialized food is destroying our genetics and immune systems through deadly modified organisms, carcinogenic materials, and life-threatening chemicals commonly found in most of today's processed groceries. Coming this April in the groundbreaking new book, Time Bomb, by Joe Artis Horn and Allie Anderson.
you'll be put in charge of your health once again as commercial marketing games are exposed and the expose of the year unveils how easy it is to avoid toxic ingredients, identify organic and safe foods, and make healthy eating affordable. You will learn how neuroscience is confirming an amazing gut-brain connection that holds the key to maintaining physical, hormonal, emotional, and mental wellness. With powerful insights from health professionals for maintaining superior physiology and reversing chronic illness without a weight loss diet, Time Bomb is set to become your most important field guide for avoiding a national health epidemic more pervasive than anyone could have ever imagined. Time Bomb. There is a genocide of deadly processed foods happening right now in the United States, creating a health epidemic more pervasive than anyone ever imagined. But now you can arm yourself with the knowledge to keep you and your family from becoming its next victim. Skywatch TV is proud to announce the Time Bomb special offer. When you order Time Bomb from the Skywatch TV store, you'll also receive the Time Bomb Companion DVD. This incredible DVD includes special, never-before-released, off-the-record interviews with healthcare professionals like Dr. Ralph Umbriaco, Dr. Joshua Vance, and Dr. Matthew Sams on the current food crisis in the U.S., and tips on how to achieve your optimal physiological health. This DVD is nearly five hours in length and also includes the entire Skywatch TV Time Bomb television series with Joe Horn, Ali Anderson, and Derek Gilbert. But that's not all. You'll also receive Eat This and Live for Kids. This colorful, fully illustrated book by Dr. Don Colbert walks you step by step through how to begin teaching your kids to love the foods that will love them back. While out shopping, how to avoid deadly toxins in many common kids' foods and household products, what to feed your kids from preschool to preteen, healthy snacks they will love, and what supplements they'll desperately need, and so much more. But the health epidemic isn't just limited to humankind. Also included in this unbelievable special offer, Joe Artis Horn's best-selling book, The Dead Pets Don't Lie Expose, and Companion DVD. This shocking book and DVD collection sounds the alarm on the scandalous practices of the commercial pet food industry. Learn how the FDA is allowing big scams where detestable, poisonous pet foods are being passed off as healthy and causing pets to die prematurely. You'll learn everything you need to know in order to quickly read pet food labels and allow your pet to avoid these toxic ingredients. Sold separately, these items hold a retail value of over $100. Yours now for a donation of only $30 plus shipping and handling. Take control today. The Time Bomb special offer is your field guide to avoiding the deadly processed foods and ingredients that are creating a massive wave of health crisis in America. This information covers every member of the family, the adults, children, and even our pets. Begin transforming how you and your family eat and live now. The Time Bomb special offer. Order now at the Skywatch TV store online or call 844-750-4985.